Hello and welcome to the Daily Comic and Collectible, episode 256. Now today, the collectible of the day is the Toy Biz Toys, Marvel Comics, X-Men Series, Rogue Action Figure. Gifted with the powers of flight, super strength, and cursed by the powers to absorb the abilities, motives, and life forces of anyone she touches, Rogue considers herself an outcast from society, until Professor X showed her how to use her abilities constructively as a member of the X-Men. This Marvel Comics X-Men Rogue action figure is still mint on card and was one hell of an awesome A-OK -okay from It's Natrix, whose info will be down below in the description. This figure comes fully detailed with an accurate look to how she appeared in the comics and on the animated hit series, down to her brown leather bomber jacket. She's fully articulated and comes hand-painted. Rogue comes with the power uppercut punch gimmick. Pull Rogue's left arm back to walk, then push the button on her back for a super tough uppercut. This figure was released in 1994 and comes with a random official Marvel Universe X-Men 1994 Ultra Flare trading card. Mine is still mint on card, and comes with original team Marvel Girl. Rogue was released by Toy Biz Toys. Now, the comic of the day is Gambit, Volume 1, Issue Number 1, of a four-part miniseries, with a cover date of December 1993 with story by Howard Mackey, art by Lee Weeks, and a glorious 90s foil cover by Lee Weeks. This issue is titled, The Tithing. On page one, we open in a dark street in the French Quarter of New Orleans, with the arrival of a dark and mysterious man, who only appears once every seven years. He's known as the Tithe Collector, and if you don't be a good child... Remember your mama's words. Woe to any who interfere with the tithing. We then switch to the danger room, where Gambit and Rogue are in the middle of a dangerous program. They are currently fighting for their lives while having a heated argument, and herein lies the problem. Storm and Wolverine are watching from the control room, and Storm is trying to decide if their sexual tension is going to get in the way of the team's missions. Wolverine states that what Storm is saying is cold, but she states it's still necessary. Rogan Gambit's fight draws Gambit's attention from the battle, and Storm attempts to stop the simulation, but Logan says she wants to see how they operate under combat conditions. Let it play. They can handle it, and fortunately for Wolverine, he was right. They passed. They are soon interrupted by Gambit's brother, Henry. Remy has been called back to the bayou, but no sooner does he tell Remy he needs to come home, he's shot in the chest with an assassin's arrow. Dying in Gambit's arms, he tells his brother the two warring factions, the Thieves Guild and the Assassin's Guild, have broken their peace treaty and are now returning to war with one another. When Henry dies, Remy swears revenge, and takes off after the killers. While Gambit is tracking down the killers, something very important happens at the mansion. While Rogue and Logan are sitting outside, it's the first time ever that Rogue admits her love for Remy. Wolverine replies, you don't have to be a telepath to figure that one out. Meanwhile, Remy tracks down the assassins and finds out the first surprise from his past. He faces down his once-dead brother-in-law. And it's this return that gives him another major shock. As Julian, his thought-to-be-dead brother-in-law, tells Gambit that his wife, Bella Donna, is still alive. The two battle, but Julian disappears after being injured by Remy. So he decides it's time to go home. Back at the mansion, Remy goes to say his goodbyes. The X-Men's Wolverine offers to go and help, but Remy replies it's family. Xavier states, we are your family, and he doesn't like the idea of him going alone. That's when Rogue speaks up saying he won't be going solo, and she will be with him the whole way. He tells her to come if she wants, but he warns her about his now-living wife, 
and there are some things about his past she may not want to learn. Rogue replies she'll take that chance. The issue ends as it began, with the tithing collector and an old Creole saying, Grab your babies, shut your doors, against the fog. The tithe collector walks the streets, beware the tithing time. To be continued in Gambit, issue number two, with the cover date of January 1994. Geek Fact During the tithing ceremony, the thieves receive a gift of three elixirs that grant long life when mixed. Bonus Geek Fact This miniseries has been compared to a Shakespearean play of a man that's destined to never find happiness. By the end, he is banished from New Orleans by his father. He has pushed Rogue away. His wife is saved, but no longer knows who he is. His brother is dead, and his fate is uncertain. Sounds like a Debbie Downer to me. And final geek fact. You knew this was coming. There has been many heated arguments of the first appearance of Gambit. As it currently stands, X-Men Annual Number 14 from May of 1990 is to be considered Remy LeBeau's first cameo appearance. And Uncanny X-Men, issue number 266, from August of 1990, is to be considered his first full appearance. But, if Marvel has its way, it has recently come out with a stance on this issue, saying that a cameo is a first full, and everything after is a second, third, and so on appearance. So Marvel wants to completely do away with the term cameo to stop all confusion moving forward. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me for today's Daily Comic and Collectible, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. This is Cat Fan Comics Man, and I'll catch you on the flip. Over and out. Yeah.